Hello and welcome back to the port. I'm the Gareth Major and today we're reviewing the tier 7 Russian tech tree battleship the Vladivostok. Uh, now research port is part of the tech tree and so for those of you who managed to get a snop in a crate and, and ground her out or those of you who are looking to grind out the Russian battleships uh, this is the end goal basically. Now this is a game of domination on shards I believe. Now we spawned in the centre. Now when you spawn in the centre there's really well, there's three things you can do. You can charge into B, you can turn left towards A, or if you play a bit weird like me, you can sometimes switch it out and head over towards C. So it, there's two Jean Bars in the centre there. Oh no, definitely a Jean Bar. Jean Bar's working with the Bismarck. So the Jean Bar and the Bismarck's in the centre. Check. Neither of them are broadside on, and I kind of want to start getting turning away here. So they definitely got something else in the centre. So we'll probably try and continue that shipping forecast once we're in a less precarious position. But what we can start doing is we're, I'm going to do my loot. You're a little bit crazy. I'm going to head over towards C here. See if I, because they're going to be a bit preoccupied what's over here. Um, so I might be able to get a different angle on them, fingers crossed. If not, I might be able to catch up what is at C from the enemy team. Might even just check an aircraft as well. Now, the survivability of the Valivistock, uh, you have a very high HP pool, if not the highest for the tier. Um, so, basically, the rest of all these stats are going to be compared to the Tech Tree battleships when fully upgraded. So, this is the fully upgraded Valivistock in comparison to the other fully upgraded Tier 7 battleships. So, none of this is kind of excludes the premiums and also removes that, oh, is it fully upgraded kind of issue. Now, you have quite average armour, however how this is distributed is not really um, known, just because we don't have armour layouts. I do have a broadside, I, let's go for that, broadside John Barr, let's see if I can get anything, fingers crossed. Uh, only 4,000, one bounce and two hits, yeah, okay that's interesting. Now um, we have quite an average torpedo reduction for the tier, so there are better out there and there are worse. Now that that John Barr has just realised that I've taken a bit of a different angle at him. Let's see, yeah, mesh bounce, bounce missed that. Now artillery wise, uh, we have the shortest range at the tier, which is a bit of a downer really. So it does mean that you are going to have to get closer to the enemy than you normally would want to. Now you have quite good caliber guns, you've got six, uh, three turrets of triple 16 inch guns. Now this um, means that you're pretty much say on par with like the Iowa and the Amagi. So that's really quite interesting stats. It's good to have them um, 16 inch guns this tier. Now for a 16 inch gun, we have the quickest reload and quite a decent traverse speed. Uh, something to bear in mind. Uh, same about there, let's see what we get. Now, for the tier, we have the um, joint highest AP damage per shell. Uh, we also have the second highest fire chance and second highest HE damage. So actually, your shell characteristics overall are very good for the tier, which is quite a nice thing to uh, bear in mind. It, it almost, it's almost like you can't go wrong with your ammunition type. Like your HE is good, your fire chance is good, your AP is good. Secondaries, we've got 12 4 inch secondaries and 12 6 inch secondaries and they're scattered all over the ship in um, dual, t uh, dual gun mounts. Now um, they're nothing special um, it, in comparison to the other t uh, tech tree battleships you're pretty much the same, same kind of range and stuff. The only thing that's different really at the moment is the Bismarck. Um, so if you go for a brawler build on something else excluding the Bismarck, say you go for like a brawling Iowa or a brawling Amagi, then maybe there could be something here to bear in mind. Uh, you could maybe go for a brawler build, but if not, then you can kind of avoid that. Uh, maneuverability, uh, you have the largest turning circle for the tier. Um, you are big, uh, you just need to take one look at that girth and you can see that she's a big girl. And I can see I'm coming up towards the edge of the map and with, with that turning circle in mind, I need to start making that turn. Now I should, I think I'm gonna pass that as broadside already, so let's go for that. Now, um, you're also the slowest for the tier, even with your engine upgrade, um, which is a bit of a shame really. Um, 
so you're slow you've got large turning circle but you do have a quick rudder shift so i guess that kind of counters your um your turning circle issue consumer wise we have the best consumer and that probably goes hand in hand with our very short gun range kind of means that in a b battleship versus battleship combat um we should see the enemy battleship earlier rather than later which means um, we have a chance to uh, get our anger uh, our armor angled our ammunition selected and stuff like that enabling us to then um, get ready for that engagement um, but then we have to wait until they get close enough to actually do that consumable wise uh, we have the usual rushing damage con and we've got three of those now these is nothing special like you still got the same damage con that you've had since tier three so it's still got 11 second duration and the 40 second reload which isn't anything special um considering that some of the other nations the that what their damage control party does has started to change um ours is still the same so we've got the limited number of them and they're starting to have like quite like a short duration in comparison but they also got a very short reload um but anything you can do to get more of those is always a good thing to do you need to bear in mind I'm broadside to that Bismarck, so I'm going to have to start picking and choosing my engagement. Uh, Alger is quite fast, about there should do it. And I've got one turret just for you. There we go. Gotta start switching my turret signs. Got a uh, Sissel on the Alger here. Nice. Oh no, destroyer. Okay, alright, so I know there's a kangaroo here. Um, I'm not going to use my damage con because there could be torpedoes in the water. If I can get rid of you, that'd be appreciated. Okay, he uses torpedoes. Um, so I can use this. Okay, yep, yeah, sorry. Um, repair party. Um, now, you get two of those. Uh, they do 390 HP per second for 28 seconds, which means a single repair party should be able to get you a about 10,920 HP. I know, that hip is on my left. Okay. Right, I'm going to load HE because I don't think that hip has come around the corner and I need to play where's the kangaroo and there's the kangaroo. So my, it would be my secondary range which is quite good so that I can start churning out. Yes, the repair party, I guess the issue there is like the limited number. It would have been nice to have more of them. Uh, but then we also get four spotter aircraft. But a spotter aircraft is a spotter aircraft at the end of the day. Is, I'm only ever going to expand on this if they're ever different or special, but that's not the case. I'm going to chance it and go there. And then I'm going to actually request... Um, I, oh. You cheeky devil. I'm going to request your assistance. Just because I kind of got a break away from that. Um, I can't really hunt the Kagura on my own. So uh, mods wise, <coughs> now this will be down in the description as always. So I always put the ship mods that you can choose down in the description. I also always put my command build down in the description. So if you ever want to refer back to them, it's always there, which is quite nice. Um, if not, we'll just run through what we can. Um, now, I've gone for aiming systems. Uh, the reason being is it is a nice overall buff to the ship. Um, your other options is to improve your traverse speed at the cost of reload, or you can go for um, secondary mod, which does improve your secondaries, but being I don't like going for a brawler build unless it's a designated brawler, I don't see any point. Um, can I let's find out? No, I can't. Okay, that's a learning curve. So I can overpen the bow of the hipper. So I'm gonna start switching those gun sides because I suspect he's gonna launch torps. I mean I would. He's got two torpedo launchers. There's one. Looks like he's gonna get me right in the butt. But I'll see if I can minimize how much I take. I'll take two. And there we go. Okay, so the HE is quite effective there. Um, 
Now the kangaroo doesn't see me, so I might try and go for the capture if that kangaroo doesn't pop up. Uh, the second mod I've gone for steering gears. Um, I literally I have the words fat girl written down in my notes here. It is just because of that massive turn circle. You kind of want your rudder to kick in and start being effective as soon as possible. Uh, your third mod, you have to take Tiger Acquisition. Um, this is basically a compulsory one. This means that you get improved spotting distance. You'll be spotting enemy ships a little bit earlier than their concealment says. Also, it improves the guaranteed acquisition range. Oh, that Kakaru is somewhere, and I'm just having to play. Here we go around the mulberry bush in the middle of the objective. He could be bloody anywhere as well. Um, now, the final mod I've gone for main battery mod. Uh, the reason being is your only other option here is to go for a secondary mod and I'd rather not go for a secondary mod um, unless I was going for a broader build. Oh, there you are. It's Jesus. Oh, hello. Nice to turn up. Now, the driver stock, it appears that you can... Uh, there's a premium camo. I don't know whether that's a future edition. Uh, it's not available in the store. Um, we're assuming it'll probably be 6,000 doubloons if it ever came to the store. Alternatively, maybe there could be a mini campaign or with the Bureau now here, yeah, that could be quite interesting. I'm really surprised that that kangaroo didn't hang around and kill me. Well, he got the Atlanta. I don't know if he's here smoke. No, I haven't seen him drop any smoke, so he could be a torpedo relay booster. Oh, we'll have to see. We've got three minutes of the game, and it's just the, it's the usual let's hunt the destroyer for three minutes until the end of the game. Um, so, if what I'll do, uh, if nothing interesting happens, I'm going to say now let's have a look at the end uh, stats of the game. But if something interesting does happen, then you're going to be still here. Um, definitely load HE. I'm sure you've all been shouting at the screen load HE, load HE. Um, and here we go on a destroyer hunt. Oh, I probably shouldn't bother. Uh, what I might do, I might just wait until I've got a bit more space and then try and break off. Because I'm sure our Kagaru probably has RDF and is hunting him down. So, the bad of his stock. How have I found her? Her guns are more accurate. Her bow is more tanky uh, than the Snop. So, she definitely has a nice upgrade in comparison to the Snop. Um, now, the turrets seem quite well angled as well, so you don't usually lose that many turrets. Um, it's It's been her speed, her, her speed and her range and her maneuverability have been the downsides. Um, I think because of her high HP pull, what you probably want to do is maybe go for the um, go for the gun mod first, and then maybe the engine mod, and then do the um, hull, hull upgrade last. Um, the reason why I'm saying that is that the hull upgrade does give you some rudder shift, so it depends how much you want that rudder shift. I mean, I did go for the hull. Well, I did my usual. I bought all as soon as I got to the first mod. I bought all the mods because what you can do is you can just buy that one, then you go to the next one, buy that one, go to the next one, buy that one, and then that way you know that you've invested in the ship and you don't have to worry about earning any more credits for it. It kind of like takes it off your mind, and also it means that because you have more to hand, you can kind of just go, right, I I kind of want to buff this instead at the moment, so you can kind of swap them out. Um, yeah, she's got a big turn circle, but the rudder does kick in. Um, I mean, I try, I play her a bit of both. I play her a bit kitey, and sometimes I bow tank. Um, when you, it all depends on the map and what you're coming up against. Yeah. Uh, Kangaroo is now no longer spotted, so he's either gone round behind that island. Is that a Russian cruiser? No. Okay, I have no idea who, who's following who then. But we've won the game. So, 82,000 damage. It's not, it's not a high game. Um, I'd say it's an average game, maybe a bit better than average. Two kills. Yeah, it's yeah, about average, like I was saying. Came fourth from the team. Um, made... I would have made money with um, without the premium as well. Now that's that can be quite difficult if you don't have premium playing tier seven because the cause of that buying cost and the ship service cost it can be quite expensive. However, I made made a pretty penny um, having the premium account, which 
yeah, it's the best way to grind the game. Um, oh, one thing to mention: the uh, the solo week, or the the weekly boost is refreshed again. So, um, <laughs> so if you did it Sunday and you did it Monday, you can do it again now, and now you can get up to like ninety promotion orders and fifteen thousand global XP and free commanders, which is quite amusing. Basically, there was a glitch on the um, Halloween camos for the Albany and some Japanese destroyer um, so they've had to come back and fix those um, so amusingly they've had to reset the weekly boost again and so it's a real brutey bonus weekend um, now this is the premium camo or the permanent camo I should say for the Valivis dog so it looks quite interesting I think if you find yourself playing her a lot then definitely go for it it's going to be quite nice and then uh, we might as well, just because we're here, we might as well just have a look at um, my commander build. Now, I've gone for Kedroth. Um, I've gone for, because of the lack of damage control parties, I've gone for um, not one for nuisance. I've then gone for crisscross because I don't want to be a brawler. Um, then um, always refer back to um, the Russian battleship commander guide we did, but Volunteer doesn't seem worthwhile, Firefighter's amusing, but Collective Labour's valuable because of extra damage control. A Mass Mechanic is brilliant because you can get one additional repair party and even get up to two additional parties when you get to, uh, when you rank them up to 16. So, if, I mean, you could increase the gun range, but it's only going to be a couple of percentage, and it, that might just bring you up, to, but you'll probably still be the worst or quite low. Uh, running with scissors just cause of that rudder. Oh god. Um, although there could be a case to say let's go for will for rebuild just because we have um, that just the two repair parties uh, base. Um, so that's how I've managed to get three repair parties and f I want to say four damage control parties. And then I've gone for condo because our concern was low. Let's make that better and also try and counter some of the uh, issues with the short gun range but then that's my play style um, that may not be everyone's cup of tea and then Cunningham just because because I use Kedroff on all of them um, I like having Cunningham just because the Russian dispersion just brings that in a bit um, brings that precision in um, on the Valivis stock I think you probably still want that because I do find the shots kind of start to wander at the maximum range but at close range they still got that Russian uh, one punch ability so yeah, that's been um, the Vladivist stock. Um, if you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe. I'm the Gallifrey Major, and back to the port.